What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we are going to talk about outlawed panels and breakers. So why is it important to even know about this? Really because as an apprentice or you know journeyman, it, as you're going about service calls uh, throughout your career, you're going to come across a lot of these panels. Um, homeowners are going to ask, are these safe? I was told by my home inspector or whatever that I need to replace this panel. So you need to know a little bit about it. So essentially the problem is a lot of these outlawed panels are really old. Um, they were created back when the UL standards in this country were a lot more loose. Um, UL as an organization really hasn't been around all that long. Um, so a lot of these a lot of these companies were established and they either didn't follow the UL standards because there <laughs> wasn't any around or they didn't know about them or they pretended that they were but they really weren't but it was just kind of a loose time and these things stuck around for decades in people's homes and they kept you know being produced more and more as new houses were being put in and then electrical fires would start in walls and houses would burn down. So this is more like a residential issue, um, but this happened with a lot of different breakers and a lot of panels over time. So uh, these companies would get sued and all of them have gone out of business by now. So that's why you need to know about them, at least knowing what the names are, um, a little bit of why you the issues are and what kind of things that you can do to test for it and check out a system if you do get called out there. Um, for somebody asking you to test them. So the names of these companies are the following. There's Federal Pacific, Zinsco, or you'll see Zinsco Sylvania, Challenger, more specifically Challenger Type A, Pushmatic, and Wadsworth. So these are the, the, the main companies. There are a lot of breakers that were made for these panels, um, little you know variations of these panels as well, like Federal Pacific also has a stab lock version um, or brand, and that has a huge failure rate on it. Like in some of these cases, it's up to a 60% failure rate of the products that were manufactured um, because there was no actual testing. Anyways, we'll get into that later. I'm actually going to do a video on each one of these in their own separate video. So I'm not going to do a deep dive here, um, but really I want you to understand that there are these brands and that they probably do need to be replaced. Now, what's really the big problem? Why did all of the fires and the deaths and all of that happen? Really, each one of these brands is a little bit different in their story as to why, but a lot of them have to do with how the breakers and the bus bar inside the panel board actually made up together. They can create really hot points. And if that uh, if that bus bar becomes damaged, but the, there's still current feeding through it, um, it could damage the breaker without you actually knowing that there's damage to it because it's on the back side of it. So a lot of just the improper seating could create excess heat and create fires. Uh, another issue that's common is a lot of the internal mechanisms inside of these breakers don't actually work like they're supposed to. Um, so modern breakers, you know, you've got these, uh, this thermal um, trip mechanism, and then you've got a magnetic trip mechanism. The thermal is usually just a bimetallic strip that has a magnet or has a spring attached to it that will trip the breaker when a little bit too much current goes through, um, or you'll have the magnetic trip uh, portion of it where when a large impact such as a short circuit happens it rips those contacts apart as well so a lot of these mechanisms inside these breakers just didn't work because they weren't being tested and nobody really knew it and they were just going out in masses and millions and then in weird cases like there's edison fuse panels if any of you have ever seen them before it's kind of like uh this where they've got these um these fuses well the base is just a standard edison a19 base and all of them are the same size. Well, if you have a 15 amp conductor hooked up to this, but somebody puts a 30 amp one of these fuses in, that conductor is gonna potentially be allowed to have a lot more current um, flowing on it, which can heat the thing up and create a fire inside of a wall, you know, same kind of thing. So there's just a lot of older stuff that they just didn't think about back then or that they did and they were being shady assholes and uh, they just killed a bunch of people. So here's what you do. If you want to inspect one of these old systems, there needs to kind of be some like guidelines, right? To, to how we approach the situation, to be able to tell a homeowner 
yeah, we need to replace this or no, I think I can do this to take care of it. Everything seems fine. So the first thing that I would do is the easiest when you take the dead front off or take the panel cover open, start taking the breakers out. Make sure you turn all of the breakers off before you do this. Don't ever take a break, breaker out under load. Turn the breaker off, pull a breaker out. Look at the actual contacts where the breaker attaches to the bus bar and make sure that there's no obvious damage to it or it doesn't look like overheating. Check the plastic casing around the breaker to make sure it's not like melted, um, but check every single breaker. And if nothing seems wrong, then I think most of the breakers are fine. A lot of times you'll see too, where the breaker actually sm uh, like slides in and snaps in place. It, they're supposed to kind of be spring held, right? Like they're supposed to be really tight and it and sliding them in place forces them apart. So if it's too loose on the breaker side and you can actually move it, like that's a problem. So that's something to inspect. Just make sure each one of the breakers themselves where they attach to the bus bar is okay. Obviously you want to look at, you know, where the conductors leave the breakers as well, but that's not usually the issue that has caused these to have the problems. But while you're there, I mean, why not take a screwdriver and just make sure everything's good to go. The next thing that I do is I inspect the bus. So I've gotten all the breakers taken out. Everything looks fine. I look at the actual bus and look at every single tab on there where all of the breakers snap in. Look at the whole bus bar all the way from top to bottom and just visually inspect everything. You might notice that there's some discoloration, you know, like there might be a spot where it's like, weird colors and stuff. And that usually means that that's a hot spot. For some reason, there could actually be like a fracture or something in that bus bar, but who knows? Again, that's not usually the issue that was causing this, but it's something to look for. If you're already gonna be in there inspecting something that's 80 years old, you might as well do the due diligence to look at every single part of it. If there's any obvious like melting of that bus bar, a lot of the materials have changed over the years. Um, bus bars were made of different materials back in the day. So some of them were weaker metals. And so they would actually cause a little bit of melting or disruption of that material or warping of it. So just inspect the entire bus bar. I would even inspect the conductors. If it's service entrance conductors or feeders that are coming into the top of this panel to feed it, make sure that the lugs are good. Nothing's loose or wobbling around in there um, and that everything is tight and if all of that looks good then you've checked the most the two most important things really so then what I would do is put all of that stuff back in place and actually try to trip these breakers there's the thermal trip and there's the magnetic trip it's kind of hard to set up a perfect test situation for a lot of these problems uh, especially when you're talking about the thermal part of it so if you're setting up on a 20 amp uh, circuit breaker, you're setting up a load, you have to know that a load is going to pull like 22 amps, 24, you know what I mean? It's going to be really hard to be precise. So you really can't do much about that for the thermal side of it. Um, but one thing that you could do for the short circuit side is you could actually short circuit some of the circuits in the house and make sure each one of them trips. This would be a crazy kind of thing to do. Obviously, you'd have to go through the whole house, find every one of the circuits, shut them off. But you can tell where every one of them are if you just shut a breaker off, go into a room. Oh, there's no power in here. Okay, well, I'm going to take a hot and a neutral, touch them together. I'm going to try to go turn that breaker on. If the breaker turns on, that breaker's not good. It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, another way that you can do this, and I don't recommend anybody that's not trained as an electrician do this, but you can actually take a live conductor, a black and a white, hot and a neutral, and touch them together very firmly. Don't tap them. The, the more firmly you hold them together, the more that you're gonna keep all of that energy inside of the, the point where you're making that contact. Um, so most experienced electricians know when you touch a hot and a neutral, boom, you're gonna get this little poof, flare in front of your face. So it's not something that I recommend that anybody that's not trained, it's not a journeyman or a master do, um, but those people know how to handle that situation. The other problem is, is when you do that, you end up, uh, really like damaging the conductors at these points. So if you're going to do it, you know, like you're doing it at the tip of the conductor so you could cut that end off and actually start with a brand new joint. Again, I'm not teaching you how to do this. I'm just saying that this is something a journeyman or a master should be able to do uh, in a controlled environment, taking live conductors and being able to test whether or not they short these conductors together and see if that breaker will trip. And if it doesn't trip, you know, then yes, we have a problem. Now, after you've gone through all of the due diligence to do all of that, the other thing that you could do is with everything back together, you could take a thermal scope and you could see if there's any hot points. Like if you have a FLIR or something like that, you could see if there's any really, really hot points in that panel. And if it's showing that a breaker is really, really hot, you would want to take your ammeter out and test and make sure there's not an excess amount of current going through it. If you've got a 15 amp breaker 
and you've got 30 amps of current being drawn on it, it's going to be really hot, but it should trip as well. So that's a one way to be able to test the thermal part of it. Um, but again, that's a lot of like, it's a lot of expense to have to have a piece of equipment around just for this kind of situation. Um, thermal testing is a really, really good thing to do, and it's really great to have one of those imagers, but not really everybody has one. So you may not be able to do this step. So the next thing to do, if everything just looks like it's fine, you've gone through and tested everything, you don't see any damage, you don't see any breakers that are sticking and, and not tripping when you're simulating a short circuit, um, then you could really walk away from that job and everything's fine. Uh, if there is no problem, then there's really no problem. However, a smart thing could be to change out every single one of the breakers. There are brand new replacement breakers that are made under a different company but they make replacement parts for all of these. And this is something I recommend if a customer doesn't have the money to be able to replace the whole thing. Most electricians are gonna say, just replace the whole panel. You know, like don't even waste the time doing any of this stuff. Just go replace the whole thing. The only problem with that is that not everybody can afford that. It is actually cheaper to buy all brand new replacement breakers for these panels than it is in a lot of situations where you have to pull permits, get an inspection, get the power company out to disconnect power to replace an entire uh, you know, service. A lot of times you have to take the riser, the meter, you have to get an ESPA a lot of times with the power company to let them know that there's design criteria and that they need to help design and figure out where the drop needs to go. It could be a huge headache to rebuild a service. Plus. These houses, a lot of times, were built like, you know, 50, 70, 80 years ago. So a lot of them don't have U for grounds. They don't have a slab ground, which means that you're going to have to add ground rods or some kind of supplementary grounding um, to this structure to bring it up to code. Plus, you're going to have to put all arc fault, ground fault um, breakers in it. And a lot of these might be 12-3. Uh, so you've got one neutral that's shared between two different hots run everywhere throughout the house. So you could have a lot of nuisance tripping when you try to put a lot of that stuff in. You have to get really expensive two pole shared neutral uh, arc fault breakers. Like you can see, it's just like, holy crap, this is building up and building up. Plus now there's like uh, surge protection, 2020 code. You have to have surge protection on everything. So it's like replacing this for some people could be an incredible cost. So it's a lot of times easier to just keep the system and put all brand new breakers in that are UL listed, that are tested to the modern UL, UL standards, um, and that are certified by a modern company that's making exact replicas of these uh, old breakers, but with new standards, new material, and making sure that everything's testing before they're just being shipped out the door. So if you're interested in any of that, Connecticut Electric is the brand. You can find a lot of these in Home Depot. You can go to bigelectricsupply.com, and there's a link in the description below, um, and order some of these, but they're in a lot of different places. So um, there, it is a possibility for customers that want to do this a little bit more on the cheap. Um, to be able to replace all of their breakers with new stuff. Again, make sure that the bus is good. Don't just go stick a bunch of breakers in. If you've got a faulty bus, you could just be masking over a problem and create you know, like a hazard that wasn't there before. Uh, but as long as the bus is good, putting all new replacement breakers in there is actually a pretty good idea for somebody that's on the cheap. And then the last option is if somebody doesn't care and they just want to replace the whole thing, then obviously do that. I think you're going to hear probably most electricians out there are just going to say, just replace the whole thing. But again, you're, you're talking the difference between a few hundred dollars and potentially a few thousand dollars. Um, so it just depends on what the inspector can do. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit more deep dive into each one of the brands. Um, as the months go, I'm going to probably do Federal Pacific next. Uh, then I'm going to do Zinsco, you know, and just kind of each month talk a little bit about the specifics of each one. Um, if you guys have any other questions, if there's anything that you want to cover or know, or if you have any extra information, if you're like some super old electrician and you were around back when these things were being put in brand new and you'd like to like have some input into these, I'd love to hear from you. Um, please leave some comments below or always just email me, Dustin at electricianu.com. Um, make sure you guys do the subscribe, join, like, bell, notification, heart, thumb thing, <laughs> you know, all the stuff that I say all the time. Um, if you're interested in joining the channel, please do. That helps me out extremely. These are my 480 volt members. I really appreciate y'all and the 120 volt members. Thank you guys so much for all that you do. Um, I hope the perks that I'm giving you are frequent and of high enough value for you to appreciate. <laughs> if not, 
definitely uh, list your complaints with the warden. Uh, but anyways, I love you crazy people. Thank you, as always, for watching. I will see you in the next one. Best Camp Music and Video.